Hi, welcome to this video and welcome back to my simulator. Uh, I like to fly the uh, Beechcraft or Textron Aviation uh, King Air 350i, which is a twin turboprop uh, aircraft. But I've had trouble configuring my Bravo throttle quadrant uh, to work with it. Uh, so I've worked that out now and I'm going to take you along for the ride. I'm going to show you the correct way to start. Uh, the engines on the King Air 350, the correct method for uh, shutting them down. Uh, I'll show you how to configure the Bravo throttle quadrant. And finally, I'll show you how to feather it in flight and restart the engine. So uh, let's see what that looks like. Have you heard this before? Right, so today we're going to work on configuring some aircraft for the Bravo throttle quadrant. But the one aircraft we don't have to worry about is the twin because the default configuration that comes with the Honeycomb Bravo throttle quadrant is the twin. Well, yes and no. It is a twin, but it's a twin piston, not a twin turbine. Okay, so here we are at a very rainy airport. But I just wanted to have a, a closer look in at the uh, Beechcraft. Okay, so let's get in and uh, we'll get some lights on. I uh, have been inside and turned things on, but you can see that the propellers are in fact uh, feathered. And now, of course, if you play with them, they'll go out of feather and you can't get them back in. And uh, I'll explain why that is later on. Anyway, we'll head inside. And uh, the first thing we're going to look at is the switches. Uh, a bit of extra light on that. So these switches here I have mapped on my Bravo throttle quadrant. And they're not mapped like on and off like that. But when I turn them on and then I hit that into the on position you can see that it actually turns it off on here and the reason I have it configured like that is because uh, you'll be flying along on this uh, in this plane and all of a sudden all your avionics will go dark and it's because you've either left an auto ignition switch on or you've left a starter on and eventually the batteries go flat okay so let's uh, go about starting this plane up the correct way. So what we'll do is we'll start with engine two, we'd arm engine two and then we'll turn on the ignition uh, for engine two and we'll go outside and have a look at what happens there. Oh we've got that truck in the way and you can see it starts to spin. Now the thing to note here is the sound that it makes. You'll hear that thwopping sound like a helicopter, and that means that it's turning, uh, and it's uh, it's actually in the feathered position. Okay, so that's running. We can hear it. What we'll do is just introduce some fuel. These are in the cutoff position. These are in the feather position. These are in the throttle minimum position. Okay, so we'll bring that up slowly, and you'll hear it when it gets fuel. there. Okay. And now you can get a bit more sense of that helicoptering sort of sound, the thwopping even more. But the engine, the propeller doesn't spin up to a really fast rate, but we'll move the throttle up to high idle. go back inside and I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to turn the starter to off. Now we'll just have a quick look at our throttles 
the way the throttles are set. And you'll see that I've got, they match the Bravo throttle quadrant. In that you've got, uh, one was wayward there. But you've got your two throttles here, you've got your, uh, the pitching uh, in the middle. And then you've got your fuel on the right hand side. And that's basically matching what's up there. So I'm going to pull this one out. We'll go back outside as I do it. And you'll hear it lessen. So I put it up there. You'll get less of the swapping sound. And the engine will come up to full idle. So we'll go back inside. And we'll uh, turn the igniter on for engine one. And I'll use the switch I have configured over here for the starter for one. And we'll go over and watch one start. Again, you should still hear that flopping sound just as you normally would. And once the engine is up to speed, we'll do the same thing. We'll introduce fuel and you should hear the turbine uh, ignite. There it is. There it is, it's spinning now. We'll take that up to full uh, fast idle position. And we'll bring the pitch out of feather. And we'll go back inside. We'll turn our igniter off. And turn the engine starter off. Okay. So as you can see, we're now running and uh, nicely. Now, you can reverse this plane. You wouldn't normally do this, of course, but I'm going to. I have my uh, the switch here, lever on my throttle quadrant. You would have seen before that's back brake, not, um, not actually uh, gear. I have the gear up here. So, with this the way it's set up, when you pull back on the throttle, it's actually going to put them in reverse. Now, as you start to back up, don't use the brake. Don't use the park brake, because if you do, you've got to use the throttle there. If you do, um, it'll tip up. The nose will come up. And if you've got crash settings on, it's going to crash. Okay, we'll just do this here, just to be quicker. Okay, so and the correct way to sw to shut them down, of course, is to also put them back into a feathered position. Now, normally, it's very difficult to get them feathered if you don't have all this Bravo configured properly. The reason behind part of this is that the feathering won't work unless they're at high idle. So when you go to feather them, uh, they're at high idle now, get back. When you put them in feather, you should hear the pitch change as it begins to do that thwopping sound. If it doesn't, I'll show you what you have to do. So you have a, they haven't done that. I don't know whether it's because I've been in reverse. So that's all right, put them up here. Part of the reason is engine speed. They won't change if they're not spinning fast enough. So you do a little bit of forward throttle, feather them again, and now you'll get them doing, and you can see they're slowing right down, and they're going into that flop mode, I call it. <laughs> then you can slow the idle right down. Now they're on low idle here, Right, they're actually still running, just like normal, and it's not until you cut the fuel that they stop. And we'll see that they'll come to a stop, and you'll see that 
the, uh, the blades are all in the full feathered position. If you mess with it like this, watch, they'll go out of feather, right? But you can't get them back. They won't go back into feather when you pull that down. And that's because they'll only go into the feather position if the engines are running fast enough. Okay, so that's a quick way to uh, start up and shut down the engines on this uh, King Air 350. I'll show you how to feather an engine in flight after I've showed you how to configure your Bravo throttle quadrant so all this works correctly. Right, yeah, so let's go into control options and have a look at what I've done and how I've set this up. Okay, so we can look at each of the um, each of these controls individually. Uh, first of all, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to search by uh, input just to show you how I've got these switches set up. So I have 36 both I have the down switches for these two positions, one and two, and I have them set for set engine master. Uh, that's the same for both of them and uh, set turbine one and set turbine two ignition switch so that's that okay they have that so that's it. next let's look at the throttle uh, we'll search by input and we'll go throttle there so oh, I did I did two actually so that probably wasn't necessary. One and two are configured the same. So you've got this uh, joy joystick L axis, and if I did um, if I did one, this one here. Okay. Ooh, spoilers. I've got a spoiler axis there. That's wrong. Uh, spoilers. I should take that out. And I'll clear that. That's left over from the basic profile. So that's just my throttle one uh, normal axis. It's not reversed. So it's throttle one axis and throttle two axis for that one. Now I'll show you reversing. So reversing, you have it set to throttle one decrease for that. And this one would be throttle two decrease like that. Okay, so that's throttle. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, now let's have a look at the pitch control. So that's this one is um, propeller one axis and you'll see it's uh, it's not reversed again. The other one of course I suppose I'll demonstrate them all just so you see this is propeller to axis. Now it's a little bit more tricky on the feathering switches. So for the feather you actually need three things. You need toggle feather switch one, increase propeller one pitch and hold propeller reverse thrust all three to 26. Just ignore this. The reason this is here 27 is when I put down uh, the thrust for engine number two it needs to trigger this whole propeller reverse thrust as well okay and we'll see that if i do uh, if i clear that oh the annoying thing with the bravo if the switch you just searched for is still on it won't allow you to clear it i'm sure we all know that so if i put that one in feather you see now you've got uh, toggle feather switch 2, increase propeller pitch 2, that's the tricky bit to get it to do it, and uh, of course these 26 and 27 both trigger hold propeller reverse thrust. Simple. Okay, so the one tricky bit is that you have to have this increase, not decrease, so that's uh, something that, uh, that can trick people, and of course both have to trigger this. I'm repeating myself, sorry. All right, let's have a look at uh, this. We have now condition lever one axis. It's condition lever is a new thing, uh, and that enables us to actually uh, set 
the mixture correctly for this and for other planes uh, like the Twin Otter and there's another one which escapes me just now but either way uh, that's it and it's not again forward is down it's not ticked as reverse and if we look at uh, look at this one here this will be condition lever 2 so don't get fooled by that condition lever thing it's uh, it but it is condition lever instead of fuel mixture now let's just check the fuel cutoff so the fuel cutoff is down so that's condition lever 1 cutoff okay and where's the other one condition lever 2 cutoff and you also toggle engine to fuel valve this one okay so the only other thing to look at is and this is also very important is sensitivity okay it's so a sensitivity controls I know it's weird um, but your throttle needs to look like that the uh, sorry throttles like that throttles straightforward uh, but they're the settings uh, zero 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 one hundred uh, mixture a little bit more difficult to get that to match because you actually want the fuel uh, at low point here uh, but you don't want it to do a fuel cutoff so there's your sensitivity is minus one hundred zero the dead zones 38 neutral minus 64 and uh, reactors 100 reactivity is 100 percent now it took a long time to work those out if you use those exact numbers i hope it'll work for you it does for me every single time as i've demonstrated uh, for you it may need to be altered slightly the other thing of course is the pitch and the pitch is just linear again nothing weird with that so the difficult one uh, with in terms of sensitivity is uh, is these uh, uh, low idle, uh, high idle, okay, and fuel cut all three to get to work. Okay, so we're done. That's how you set it up in Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, and I created a, a profile called Turbo Prop Twin. Okay, so as I said already. Uh, most of the uh, the videos out there that I've seen, they all just say, "Oh, the default is uh, is for a twin, so we won't do anything with it." And that's great if you've got a propeller uh, piston powered twin. Uh, this probably won't work for that. The default uh, config will work better. But this is purely for a turbo prop twin, like uh, in this case, the uh, King Air 350. Okay, so let's go uh, get up in the air and have a look how we feather an engine in flight. Okay, so for those of you who are wondering why you have uh, the uh, propeller feathered for startup and for shutdown, it's basically, uh, it requires uh, pressure from the high pressure oil pump uh, within the propeller section to cause it to come out of feathering because with the weights and everything by default it goes to the feather position uh, but to allow that oil pressure to increase prior to actually turning anything uh, that's why they go through that procedure but the others uh, that are in the section getting ready to type furiously well having the propeller feathered is going to place all that extra load on the uh, on the turbine section because as you'll realize uh, the uh, in this photo for example on the right hand side is the gas turbine or jet engine uh, part of a turboprop and on the left uh, the orange and yellow is the propeller side so you'll notice that in the center section here they're actually not connected it's the pressure coming out of this uh, end stage turbine that pushes onto this uh, propeller or turbine and then ejects out out of the engine but it's that pressure coming through this section here uh, that causes the second stage to spin or second half to spin 
and that gives you your um, that gives you your propeller motion. So the two aren't connected. So starting the gas turbine or jet engine part will be in no way impacted uh, by the propeller being feathered. Okay, so here we are. We're cruising along. Uh, we're not very high, uh, but we're cruising along at 197. We're going to simulate an engine failure and feather it. How to feather it and restart it. So I'm going to bring the prop back. going to bring this backwards as well on engine one it's going to want landing gear I'm going to put just a touch of throttle in to get rid of the landing gear message then I'm going to feather the propeller and of course we're going to have to watch our speed we'll have to increase the speed a little bit we are going to get a warning but because I shut that down, we'll see that now we've got a prop that's feathering. And the uh, blades are, of course, in the feathered position. Straightforward, just like we like them. Okay. Now. We better restart that engine. We're in... We're losing space. If I take that out of feather, that'll help start it. Ignition back on. The turbine hasn't started, of course. We have to put that on. Air on, and we'll, we've got it spinning. We'll introduce some fuel. And we'll see that N1 is N1 is climbing here. Yeah. So I've got an error. Uh, should be able to turn off the igniters, turn off the starter. And slowly the engine will come back up to speed. There we go. And we're now back running on two engines. So that's a simple procedure to go through. You can see here that the ITT and everything's all coming up nicely. And we probably don't need to be running them flat stick anymore because. Yeah, there we go. We went high. So there you go. That's how to feather an engine in flight and how to restart it. Uh, I was pretty low, 3,500, you'd want a bit more height, I think, for most uh, tests, I guess. Okay, so there you go. I hope that's of help to you. Uh, for those of you that fly the Kodiak or the Twin Otter, which are also uh, twin turboprop aircraft, this should be able to lead you in the right direction. I can't do a video on those because I don't own those aircraft. So, take the information I've given you today and uh, utilise that. Uh, to work out because the configuration will be very similar uh, so with that I'll say uh, you all look after each other take care and be kind to one another and I'll see you on the next video